Welcome back to Leah's Leaves. I've been gone a while, but it's all good stuff. Um, at the beginning of the new year, I'll be moving to a new property that has an acre of land. And uh, of that, I would say about one-fifth of an acre will be available for me to garden on, and which was would be significantly more land than I'm growing on right now. So I'm really excited about that. There will be a video coming up where I take you on a tour of that property so you can help me envision what my new garden is going to look like. But I, today I wanted to bring you along with a seed haul from M.I. Gardener. Uh, at the end of each season, his seed shop does a grab bag of random overstock items that they're trying to get rid of before they restock for the 20, for the in this case, for the 2022 season. And I grabbed three of the grab bags. So that was um, $15 each plus $3 shipping and handling. There were 30 seeds in each of those grab bags. So I got 90 packets of seeds. Some of them were duplicates, as you can imagine, which is fine. I was grabbing these, first of all, because they're a great rate. And secondly, because uh, I participate in a lot of seed swaps and I have a seed bank at my local public library to donate to. So any of the duplicate packets are either going to end up in the hands of other growers through seed swaps or they'll end up in other gardens right here in my region through the seed vault at the Massanutten Regional Library System and specifically my local library which is Page County Library in Luray, Virginia. So I want to bring you along and show you what I got in my grab bag because I got some really cool stuff. I got some items too that I already had in my collection but that's okay because I have places to put them. I have people to give them to and uh, I'm also going to bring you along to Seed Mail Seed Co. You've heard me talk about her business before. She's out of Florida and I also placed a recent order on her website and got some really beautiful things. So let's start with Seed Mail and then we'll look at what I got from MI Gardener, okay? If you've never ordered from Seed Mail Seed Co., I recommend her business. Um, the packets are all look like this with beautiful pictures on them so you know what the plant looks like. The website's very informative, and she includes cute little gifts like stickers, a bag of tea, a bookmark with each order, just little special touches. So from her shop, I got... Northern Lights Snapdragon Mix. I have a different Snapdragon Mix that was a different color scheme. Hi, Claire. Did you come in to walk all over my seeds and mess everything up? You gonna say hi to everybody? There you go. <laughs> She's my talker. But my other Snapdragon Mix is much darker, and so this one was like... Uh, a lighter palette and I just really love the colors so I'm excited to grow these but by the way it's mid-November and my snapdragons are still blooming outside some red bachelor buttons also called cornflowers one of my favorites look at that beautiful zinnia two-tone variegated really pretty luminosa American Purple Top Rutabaga. I wanted to grow some rutabaga here in the fall and again in the spring, so I bought these. And then uh, when my MI Gardener order came, it, there were more rutabaga in my packet. So, yeah, if any of you are interested in some free rutabaga seeds, when you finish watching this video, just leave a comment and like the video, subscribe to my channel. And then shoot me an email at leahsleaves at hotmail.com and let me know that you'd like to try some purple top rutabaga seeds and I will send you some for free since I now have an abundance. <laughs> and then this is fun. A lot of you have, have been growing this already. I have never tried it, but the whole idea of anthocyanins coloring broccoli and taking what is a traditional green vegetable and turning it purple, I just love that. So, early purple sprouting broccoli. This is not a heading broccoli either, so it grows faster. Only 65 days. 
Um, I have grown some other broccoli rob uh, slash rapini, it's sometimes called, and Chinese sprouting broccoli. So this is in the same vein. I love how it tastes, and it sautés beautifully. And I find that um, the florets themselves are not as prone to worm damage as a heading broccoli would be. Plus, they just don't take as long to grow. Okay, so that's Seed Mail Seed Co. I've ordered lots of seeds from her, and I love them. Let's look at what I got from M.I. Gardener. Got some Rouge de Verona Radicchio. I love Radicchio. I already have some Rouge de Verona Radicchio from an, a previous seed order, so this is surplus for me. I'll probably send that to the local library. As far as onions go, I got some Guardsmen. These are the spring onions or scallions. Cipollini onion, which are a flat onion. Utah yellow sweet Spanish. Those are very common in the grocery store. Yellow onions. More of the guardsmen. More of the guardsmen. <laughs> more of the cipollini. More of the cipollini. And more of the sweet Spanish. <laughs> anyway, so I am rich with onions right now. As you can see, I don't know anybody who can grow that many onions. So I'll find a home for them. If you participate in my next seed swap, you're likely to get some onions in there. I got some Minnesota Midget Cantaloupe. This is a wonderful cantaloupe. Uh, I have grown this two years in a row. I just love it. Oh, look at the cat. She's going to make this video very difficult. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You don't want to see that. Okay. Minnesota Midget Cantaloupe. That's a very good cantaloupe. I'm going to show you. I just have squash and melons kind of lumped together. Delicata squash, I've never grown, I haven't grown much squash and pumpkin just in general because I've never had the space for it. So one of the things I'm looking forward to in 2022 is actually having room for these plants to grow. Um, delicata squash. I've heard Jess from Roots and Refuge Farm talk about her delicata squash. Howden pumpkin, that looks like a beautiful pumpkin. Never grown that. Black futsu squash. With the marbles, wrinkly bits, and a pretty color, I think. Sort of a peach color. I've never grown that. I got extra of those. This is fun. A cornucopia gourd mix for decorative gourds. Never grown those. Straight neck squash. I have grown that, and I love it very much. So I'm excited to have some seeds for that. A crimson sweet watermelon. I've never grown a crimson sweet before. A Waltham butternut squash. I love butternut squash. Looking forward to growing some of that. A Connecticut field pumpkin. Those are pretty uniform, round, and perfectly colored. A second packet of Connecticut field. These are huge. The Charleston gray watermelon. Have any of you grown those before? They take a long time, I'm guessing, because of their size. They have sort of a gray exterior, but the fruit on the inside is just normal sweet watermelon. More delicata squash. And wait, more delicata squash. Here's a pretty pumpkin, the Valenciano white pumpkin. Looks sort of like a Casper pumpkin, I guess. Never grown one of those before. The Jack B. Little Pumpkin. Those are adorable. And Long Island Cheese Pumpkin. Another light colored pumpkin. This one I had gotten seeds from somewhere. I don't remember where. But what struck me was that it was presumably very sweet. So now I have this brand plus the other brand that I had bought. Okay, so that's all the melons and squashes. Let me clear a space here since the cat kind of took over the table. <laughs> oh, clear. Hi, Booger. You're so pretty. You gonna purr for everybody? Oh, 
All right, now we'll look at some tomatoes and other warm weather plants. Got a ton of tomatoes. Gobstopper tomatoes, never grown those before. Little cherry. Sunray tomato. Reminds me very much of the Golden Jubilee, which I love and is one of my favorite tomatoes to grow. I'll be interested to see how they compare. The Tigarella. I just grew these for the very first time this year, and they're lovely. Look at that striping pattern on them. Cream Sausage. This is a paste-style tomato, but uh, in a light yellow color. Roma. Another good paste-style tomato. Marglobe. Another uh, good indeterminate vining tomato. About like saladette size, like four ounces or three or four ounces. Not huge, but really uniform in shape and color and gloss. Um, I really like this tomato. Here's my Jubilee. Seeds from, this is probably my favorite of all the yellow varieties that I've grown so far. So I'm interested in um, comparing that to the new Sunray ones that I got. Rio Grande. Never grew those before. Rutgers I grew this year for the first time, and man, they just kept going and going and going. Same with the climbing triple crop. I grew these tomatoes over a 16-foot cattle panel trellis, and they went, I think the, it went about 14 feet, maybe 13 and a half feet. So they just kept growing, and they produced a ton of food. Black from Tula tomato. I have never grown a black or purple tomato before. I did get some Cherokee purple seeds, and now I have these black from Tula tomatoes. I'm very excited to grow one or both of those varieties this year. The delicious tomato. I hope it lives up to its name. I've never grown that variety before. Red pear. This year I grew the yellow pear. They were very nice. This is another indeterminate variety that, um, if it's anything like its yellow cousin, it was very, very uh, productive. And also, it stayed completely disease-free the whole season. Didn't have a single pest problem on it. And another sunray. I got two packets of that. Okay, some other warm weather crops. I got some Casper eggplant. I did seed some of these this year, but the seedlings didn't survive the transplant process, so I never got any white ones. We'll try again, 2022. Straight eight. I love this cucumber. This is the this is the variety my grandma grew every year. She swore by this. It was her favorite cucumber. She pickled it. She we ate it fresh. We ate it in salads. She made relishes out of it. And it has a very good, consistent growth habit and good flavor. And it's just, to me, it's very easy to grow. I love it. Hungarian hot wax peppers. I grew a ton of these two years ago. This year I skipped them entirely because <laughs> I just had so many from the year before I needed a break from them. But they're good. They're basically like banana peppers. Maybe if you let them ripen so that they turn orange instead of yellow, they're a tad hotter, but not by much. So if you're somebody who, it, it's called hot wax pepper, but if you're someone like me who likes super hot peppers, this is a relatively mild pepper. Certainly more mild than a jalapeno. Sunbright, a sweet pepper, a yellow sweet pepper. Isn't that pretty? Excited to grow that. Lemon drop. Aren't those pretty? From Peru, it's a spicy and tangy seasoning pepper with a fruity, lemony flavor and aroma. Fruits grow up to two inches long and dry well. That'll be fun. I've never grown those before. Jalapenos. The good old standby. Another packet of Sun Bright Sweet. A packet of orange habanero. I grew these for the first time this year and loved them. And I got two packets, actually, of that. And a red habanero. A 
You only live once, Wonder Pepper. <laughs> it's a sweet pepper, YOLO Wonder. I got two packets of that. And the Golden Cow Wonder, California Wonder. Another yellow pepper. Okay, let's turn to brassicas and cool season crops. Here's more of the rutabaga. Rhubarb Swiss chard. That's the color of rhubarb. I love Swiss chard. I have a separate video on, on how to grow Swiss chard and saving seeds from Swiss chard is really easy. It's a biennial, so you, you let it grow to, like, I planted mine spring of 2020, and then I harvested the seeds in August of 2021. Rainbow Swiss chard. Early Jersey Wakefield cabbage, similar to a Thunderhead cabbage, has kind of a point to it. And the late flat Dutch cabbage. And the one thing I've noticed on the packets, yeah, this one had, for the early jersey, had 90 to 110 days, but it's only a 65 to 70 day one. And then on the late flat Dutch, that's the long one. They had it labeled at 65 days, but these actually take 110 days. And you can tell just from the size, the looser the leaf and the tighter the head, that tight head is going to take longer to form than that. And they call it early because it's a quick grow, growing crop and late because it is a late forming crop. Just be aware if you got these from MI Gardener, um, double check the timing on the internet so you make sure that you give yourself enough time. And don't over or underestimate how much time it's going to take to grow those. There's some spring rapini, broccoli rob. Which is essentially the purple sprouting broccoli, except green. <laughs> okay, then I got some beans. Dwarf Taylor bean. I had already ordered some of these from MI Gardener in a previous order, and now I got more. But I love bush beans. And I now that I have the space, I want to do more with drying beans so that I can save them and winter them over and use them as an off-season edible. Jade beans, green beans. These are a bush variety and more the dwarf tailor. Next, we have some leafy greens and, oh, and herbs. Let's do that. The cat's sitting on everything. I got a the type of fennel that is not bulbing. Gross fruits tiger. And then I got some of the where did it go? There it is. The Florence fennel, which is the type I prefer. It's the bulbing type. I love to eat fennel. Dark green flat leaf parsley. Salad burnet. Never had it before. Never never grew it before. Lemon balm. One of my all-time favorite herbs to grow and to eat. More dark leaf parsley. Broadleaf sage. Love sage. The bees love sage, too. So even if you're not a fan of eating sage, you should plant some. It's one of the best pollinator attractors you can put in your garden seriously it flowers is beautiful um purple or bluish flower anyway you should be growing sage even if you don't like the taste of it because it brings beneficial bugs to your garden and this is neat the italian large leaf basil i've seen people grow this but i've never grown the large leaf basil so definitely excited to try that and then I have to dig under the cat here for a second to get to the leafy greens. <laughs> Slow bolt lettuce, which is nice because we have very short springs here and then it jumps straight to summer and my spring crops will bolt very quickly. So anything that's a slow bolt variety is a benefit to me. 
Grand Rapids, very easy lettuce to grow and very pretty to grow and very easy to grow. More Grand Rapids leaf lettuce. And look at that, by the way. There's a thousand seeds in each of these. Lettuce, one lettuce plant can produce thousands of seeds. Black Seeded Simpson. This is probably my favorite of all the leaf lettuces that I've grown so far, other than a red one called Solar Flare, just for the flavor and texture. Large Leaf Sorrel. I've never had sorrel, but I'm definitely going to grow this, having read a lot about all of the benefits of it. Herba Stella Minutina. Had no idea what this was. Maybe you do. All it says on the packet is a sweet, tender winter green. It normally grows wild, so it's very easy to grow. It doesn't require rich soil to flourish. It's cold hardy, and it gets sweeter after the frost and will overwinter in many regions with minimal protection. You can clip and regrow, but still succession sow for best quality, best if harvested young. I have no idea what this is, but I'm so excited about it. A sweet winter green. Cool. Slow boat arugula. I love arugula, but again, it always bolts on me very quickly. So hopefully this will be a variety that works in my climate. And red amaranth. I'll grow it for the leaves. I have another type. Um, the, what is it? Love Lies Bleeding. This also can produce, when you let it go to seed, the flower head, it says 60,000 seeds. That's a grain. Amaranth is such a beneficial plant. And these purple or red ones have all the extra benefits of the antioxidants and the anthocyanins so that's a that's a beautiful plant and they're just pretty they're really pretty they're easy to grow they're hardy and every part of the plant is edible all right let's dig under a cat to find the root crop where'd you put them where's my stuff don't take my parsnips you got anything hiding under there? Are you hiding anything? Okay. Is that all? Yes, my queen. Sorry to disturb you. Hollow crown parsnips. Hamburg rooted parsley. I've never grown rooted parsley before. And Mammoth Sandwich Island Salsify. Which they don't sell in stores. But it's supposed to be a cross between a carrot and a parsnip. And I like carrots and I like parsnips. So and it, it looks a little ugly on the outside, doesn't it? So you're really going to have to shave that, peel the skin nice and deeply to get to the fruit there. I'll be interested to try this roasted. See how it roasts up? Like parsnips are very good roasted. Carrots are very good roasted. And then I got some flowers and plants. Mixed cactus seed. Um, I got two packets of this. And I shared one with my mom. And then got two packets of Cracker Jack marigolds. Which uh, are always beneficial and easy to grow. And I got two packets of this. One of which I've already planted at the new place. And then... I, it's not shown here, but I also got two packets of something called Upland Upland Wildflower Mix from the order. And I've already planted that at the new place too. And I got some clover, which I've also planted. Um, we had done some excavating. I'll put a link in the description below to show you the video of my mom's land and the delivery of her little tiny house uh, earlier this year. And... After all the excavation and the driveway was built and the septic system was put in and everything, we have to completely from scratch plant out because a lot of trees were uprooted for the project. And so now there's a, a potential erosion problem. 
but we don't want grass because nobody wants to mow on a mountainside. So we're planting a lot of um, flowers, clover, creeping thyme, creeping zinnia. Um, some other like rocky flowers, things that can grow with a shallow root system in rocks and crags. So, and then this is going on the hillside. I'm excited about that. Some of it, it's a mixture of um, annuals and perennials. And the annuals, like you can see the poppies there, but they'll so they'll self-seed. So even though they're an annual, they'll self-seed and the new seeds will grow in its place the following year. Anyway, that's my and my gardener seed haul, right, Claire? You gonna say hi to anybody? Right? Right. She agrees. Can you tell? Anyway, I'm learning a lot sharing it here. If you had a grab bag from MI Gardener, I'd love to hear what kind of new or interesting things you got in your collection. And again, if you want some free purple top rutabaga seeds, shoot me an email with your name and address at leahsleaves at hotmail.com and I will send you some for free. Come grow with me. Bye. Goodbye, Your Majesty.